Welcome everyone, this is Garth again, and while Dave is busy playing Grandpa, I thought I would bring you another video. I would like to introduce you to Steve. Steve is a friend and fellow survival enthusiast. Steve has more or less been shoved into the survival community via his profession. It requires him to drive all over the United States with his four-wheel drive truck to places like Montana in the winter, Arizona in summer, and many other unforgiving areas, and it places him in jeopardy of being in a survival situation at any time. Steve is far more at risk than most of us. Steve just recently became an ardent listener to the Bushcraft on Fire radio show, so we welcome him into the family, and today we're going to take a look at the pack he keeps with him at all times. We're going to have him take it apart for us, and we're going to kind of not really be critical, but we're going to let each of you just take a look at what he has, uh, is it something that, that you would carry? What would you add to it? And please feel free to comment on this video. And be nice and be polite, but put in there things that you feel he should put in the pack, things that he should have with him. And remember, he's driving in areas that many of us would find uncomfortable um, going through in, in any situations. And he does this all the time. So, you know, we, we pray for his safety, of course, but more than that, we want to help him if we can. So, without further ado, here's my friend Steve and the video. Thanks, folks. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Gar's friend. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> what we have here is my pack that I've started here. Um, it's just your basic backpack. Um, your ballistic nylon, got some molly on it, hopefully some good zippers, seems to be fairly comfortable to carry. Should be able to carry a, a fair amount of weight. Uh, don't want to get past 30 pounds though in the uh, total there. That's a good pack, Steve. I, I like the pouches on the side so you have ready access to the things you need right away. Yep. Well, try to do my work there. Uh, there are some in items in here that are just uh, a little extra, and there's some few things that I have in my vehicle that I haven't transferred over. Um, mainly, I've focused on uh, fire starting and general survival. Um, got some, uh, some paracord. That's 550 paracord. paracord. Now, is that the seven strand or eight that strand? Is, that, is, that is seven strand. Seven That's strand. US okay. made, real um, paracord. Uh, the other things I have in here are some uh, 45 magazines. They're really not intended for the survival pack. It was just I needed a place to put them at the time. And uh, that's what we got there. Um, Very nice Mora knife. Got a Mora knife right there. Nice and light. Good quality knife. Now, what knife would you, would you, you wouldn't carry all your knives in your pack. You'd carry one on your belt, and of course you have a pocket knife, so. Yeah, always, always keep a good quality folder. Um, I like the zero tolerance. Um, it's a good, uh, it's a good knife, good quality blade. Um, that is a nice thick blade. It's got a good, yeah. secure um, catch to the handle, nice blade mm -hmm. shape, no serrations, very nice. Yeah. Not to get too caught up good book. Always, always take a book with us. Yeah, always something to occupy your mind. Um, here we go. Lensatic compass? Lensatic compass, yes. Actually, I uh, went a little bit on the whole hog and uh, went the tritium route. Okay. I, I would not leave home without my compass. I know a lot of people are um, iffy about compasses, and, and they are not 100% necessary in a survival situation, but they sure help if you know how to use one and you're familiar with your surroundings. Yeah. Spare Shema. Now, is that in case you find yourself in a Muslim country? And uh, no, they're just uh, they're really good. Uh, I'll probably have to warm. edit that part out. They can but. keep you warm. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. <laughs> No, I, uh, I I travel even, uh, it's kind of comical, even when I, I fly, I often have a Shema with me. They seem to actually leave me all alone a little bit more when I'm wearing Now, Shema is nothing but a scarf. Yeah, it's just a, it's a cotton scarf. It's just a, a square cotton scarf. Remember, folks, cotton kills. Cotton does kill in most <laughs> cases, but with a Shema, 
Uh, you have something you could make a uh, a sling, a tourniquet. It's great fire starting um, material, folks. Cotton. Uh, yeah, if you want to start a fire with it, uh, you can soak it in water and help keep you cool in the summer. You can wrap it around your neck and create a find a, a wool nice scarf, scarf folks. Just find a wool scarf. Well, I'm not a big fan of wool. Um, what? Wool is the ultimate survival material, Mister. Get with a, it. Not for a scarf. <laughs> um, I've got some emergency rations there. Now that's interesting. These are SOS rations. Um, yeah. So food lead. Supply. They are. They look to be freeze dried. Have you tried these? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't actually opened a pack up. They're they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, yeah, because most of the less, time, less less than less than ten dollars. Most that of the pack. time, those things are expensive. Yeah, no, it's 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 very reasonably priced. Uh, easily available online. Um, at one of our fire starter. Now the Instafire now. You don't have to carry it that way, folks. That sort of thing, it's granulated. So I've actually uh, made some survival straws and, and utilized that, or you can just put it in a film canister or anything like that. But that Instafire is very good stuff. It burns for three to five minutes, which is plenty of time to get your tinder going. So good, good carry item. Here's something I haven't uh, actually parsed out, but your uh, thermal blankets. Now these are great things to carry, folks. Now they have some problems. Number one, they're very thin and they're very easily uh, torn. But and you can buy the thicker ones. I actually have one that I'm going to show Steve, and um, we'll talk yeah. about later on. But these things you can get them for like next to nothing. Yeah, they're very and inexpensive. They are. They are definitely lifesavers. Right. Definitely lifesavers. Yeah. They 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 work on uh, you know a reflective principle. So. Uh, you pretty much have to cover, and you're using basically the person's body heat reflected back at them to uh, to keep them warm. But they they will help somebody in shock or somebody in a hypothermia. Um, got a life straw. Don't know. Very that. nice. Yeah, these are these are kind of the standard for for. Um, water uh, purification. Now I gave uh, Steve a life straw in a little kit that I made up for him but I'm, I will also show you uh, either in this video or another one our Sawyer system. I'd like to show S Steve the Sawyer system and I'll show him why it's better than a life straw. But carry on. This is a little bit on the heavy side uh, compared to most items. We'll pick those um, up later. Steve. But I just think in the long run it's better to have a little heavier quality and it's actually a stainless steel cook set all stainless I'm not a big copper guy um, works real nice I also have in there sil silicone cup and bowl okay these are nice because uh, they pop open pretty good size um, they can resist they nest. Heat. you can it's you nice can, they nest they nest nice they don't weigh much at all um, you can put boiling water in them. They're good to about 450 degrees. Obviously, they can't take direct flame or a direct hot surface, like if you have a small uh, camping stove or anything like that. But uh, but they are pretty handy and uh, can just make life a little bit easier when you're out camping or if you're in a survival situation. Ah. Uh, Titanium, very nice fork set, very light, gonna last forever. Here's an interesting thing: a little stainless steel shovel. That can be uh, real handy, um, especially when you're gardening, taking uh, care of your flower beds. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in all honesty, folks, that's a perfect thing for digging roots. It'll save your knife. Yeah. And especially if it's very light yeah. like that one isn't very small easy to carry also also pretty good when it comes down to uh, digging the latrine something like that so we have uh, some more fire starting here waterproof container with the nice uh, waterproof matches where did you get those matches? are they strike anywhere or are they they're, they're, they're strike anywhere and the best thing about these matches is you can actually fully immerse them underwater while they're burning Pull them out and they'll reignite. So they have magnesium. Then they are. They, are uh, they have a chemical coating. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly that orange coating is, but it's for the duration of that orange coating. They can uh, they can be immersed in water and bring them back out. Now, where did you find those? Dave, for our uh, actually, believe it or not, Amazon.com. Amazon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah they can. Uh, 
they can be found. Um, lighter. Got to have a lighter. Got to have a lighter. Yeah, there's uh, here's the actual Uko. Uko Stormproof Matches. Okay, outstanding. Yep. yep. Um, and that's just another lighter and some more matches. It's always good to uh, to keep things keep keep some. Uh, Redundant so we've covered just about all the items in here. There's a few more, but I guess before we're gonna to get to that, we're gonna to get to the big knife. We've kind of got the small folding knife. Let me we've swing kind right of got the uh, we've kind of got the medium-sized Mora knife that's nice and light and all that. But then there's the big survival knife. And in this case, what we have here is the uh, Smith and Wesson. Uh, the CK Surge. It's a Homeland Security, um, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Homeland Security, the CK Surge. Uh, that is a thick knife. It's got the Tonto style blade. Um, it's reasonably sharp. Full tang, full thickness. Well, look at that the thickness is, on that. It that is, awesome. is that is that is like a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, it's kind of got this little cutout here. I think that's for batoning. Decent for batoning. I think that that gives you a nice nice place to strike the blade. Um, it is carbon stainless, so you shouldn't have any trouble with flint yeah. if you need flint, Yeah. if you ever find flint. Yeah, it's got some nice lanyard holes in it. It's got the G10 handle, so a uh, good sturdy handle right there. It's got um, the holes on the front guard, too, for attaching as yeah. a spear, and that, that's nice. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things you could do with this knife. I mean, it um, it's a hefty size knife. Okay. There's no doubt about it. Outstanding. Okay, let's see what else is in your pack. What else is in my pack here? Well, last little bit. Got some... Uh, Aha, fishing gear, yes. Fishing gear, yeah, some, some little... Um, now, those are leaders, right? Do you have no, any... No, no, these, no. These actually, these actually are nice because uh, they're kind of like fish snares. Uh, they use a hook principle, but they actually you actually create a bow with them, and when the fish takes the bait, this will auto set the hook. Oh. So in other words, you will not need to be actually on these. Now you have to be careful with these. These are not legal for regular use in all states. Some states prohibit the use of this. Well, we've talked about that before, um, and in a survival situation, so, that's not something so, you really need so, to worry about. So while it's always good to to make sure you know how to use these. Uh, please be careful and don't fall uh, when you're practicing. afoul of any of, yeah. of any laws or anything like that. Um, if you just give the DNR a call, folks, they should be able to tell you if you can use them or not. Yeah. But um, yeah, you, Steve obviously has used them. They work pretty well, pretty yes, effective. Yes, they, they they are very very handy. They um, they will allow you to uh, to catch small panfish quite easily without any effort. And in a survival situation, it's always about conservation. Absolutely. And uh, and if you can. Uh, gain the ever precious protein without having to put forth any effort or energy all the better so for right now that that pretty much concludes my pack I do have some items in my vehicle that I've yet to transfer over to a pack that would be like a uh, chainsaw um, you know a hand chainsaw and a few other items like that um, some flints um. now folks the wonderful part of all this is Steve could take this with everything that's in it he could walk off into the woods and he could survive for an appreciable amount of time with nothing except what's in his pack. And, and of course, his knowledge. And, you know, knowledge is key. But um, outstanding, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, we appreciate it. And, uh, folks, be seeing you.